Hi everybody, Dr. Zelkin here, board certified plastic surgeon, Newport Beach, California. Uh, and I do a lot of uh, discussion about facial plastic surgery and buckle fat pad uh, removal surgery. Um, I think this has gotten me a lot of patience over the years and I've uh, amassed quite an experience uh, with this procedure, not only performing the operation, but also sort of studying the outcomes. Um, and one thing that I've noticed about it is it happens to be a fairly subtle procedure that doesn't typically age the face or hollow it out. Um, I know that's what it's designed to do and that's one of the intents, but I really want to dispel some of the myths that seem to be circulating about buckle fat pad surgery and provide perhaps a counter argument to a lot of important naysayers who bring to light a lot of potential issues with the operation. So today I'm gonna to do something different and I haven't done this before, but I'm gonna actually react to a video um, that I found online uh, with an influencer from Down Under named Stephanie Lang. And she's a very enigmatic young woman who has a lot of important opinions that deserve discussion. Um, and rather than pigpiling on an operation as a basically a cause of a lot of uh, alarming changes to celebrity faces, I wanna be a little bit more analytic about how these changes are occurring and what else may be uh, to explain for some of the changes we're seeing. So if this is something that interests you, and you want to hear a counterpoint, stay tuned. Uh, thanks so much. Guys, welcome back to my channel. I actually wasn't going to be filming today. I have been having Braxton Hicks all day. I never had... Oh, well, congratulations. Sounds like you're about to be a mom. Never had them with Axel, so I'm like, am I literally about to go into labor? But then I happened to be on the internet, as I do, and all these articles started popping up, and I was like, what the heck? This trend that I am noticing is not only alarming, but disturbing. Have you I've noticed that too. I think that buckle fat pad surgery has been around for a really long time, and I've personally been performing the operation for almost a decade, but I will tell you that in the news over the past six to 12 months, it's definitely peaking and becoming more recognized. Um, as far as it being a trend or not, we have yet to determine. Have you guys seen the celebrities that had rather regular, normal looking human faces, and then all of a sudden their cheekbones and jaw? Okay, so, uh, Miss Lang references this uh, photograph as a celebrity that had a normal looking human face that uh, all of a sudden became more bony and skeletal. Um, I want to just be a little bit cautious about that. I think that accusing people, especially celebrities, of looking abnormal after surgery is probably, is, it's probably painful. Um, and to say that people have changed is one thing, but to attribute surgical procedures on somebody who doesn't admit to it is that it's a slippery slope. Um, and just like you and I, a lot of these celebrities have um, delicate um, egos perhaps, and um, <clears throat> they are sensitive uh, to this sort of feedback. And I would, I would warn people to uh, avoid um, telling celebrities either in comments or in videos that they don't look normal. It's got to be very painful to endure that. This patient, this woman in particular, is very pretty before. I agree with um, Stephanie on that. I think that her change is maybe not as attractive in the after. I don't know the difference in time in the before versus the after, and the lighting and makeup are certainly different. One thing I do notice is that she always had an attractive hollow in her mid face, um, making it seem that she's not one that necessarily needs buckle fat pad removal. But what I'm noticing in these after photos is that there's a lot more volume along the malar eminence here. And this accentuates her pre-existing hollow. So I would go so far to venture based on the width of her chin and the prominence of her cheekbones that this may have as much or more to do with fillers and augmentation of the bony skeleton of the face than buckle fat pad removal. So I would just um, guide viewers to be a little bit careful. Um, if she did have buckle fat pad removal, I think its influence on her mid face is attractive. Yes, her overall facial shape does look more gaunt and skeletal, but I don't think that has anything to do with buckle fat pad removal. chiseled AF and you were like, what the heck happened to you? 
Is it just me? It seems to me that there is no end to society's unrealistic beauty standards and no end to the amount of tweakments and cosmetic surgeries that we as women can have performed on us in order to change our appearances to better I think Stephanie is correct. I think there's a lot of pressure on young women to have plastic surgery and men too. About one third of my buckle fat practice is male. Um, and I do think that there's a lot of pressure, especially if it's an easy and safe procedure that's quickly done under local anesthesia, why not go for it? Um, um, there, all of these pressures are unlikely to change in the next few years. Um, and I do sympathize with the community if they feel pressured into having plastic surgery. Uh, I will also notice that a lot of patients who come to me for buckle fat pad removal are not necessarily in the public eye and they are truly doing it for themselves. They feel that they've always had puffy full cheeks and that they don't feel confident. They feel when they smile, it's too fleshy. And they're looking for an option that would maintain their appearance, but give them a little bit more contour and definition in the face. So even though these pressures are certainly upon us and are not going anywhere soon, I would also say that there's a lot more incentive for plastic surgery than societal pressure alone. ...to better suit this unrealistic beauty standard. But buccal fat removal, this is going too far, in my opinion. It's per perfectly natural for Ms. Lang to state that the buccal fat pad removal procedure is going too far. Um, I would notice that looking at her, honestly, for the first time, she's a very attractive woman, she naturally has that contour in her mid-face, so perhaps she doesn't have that insight, that understanding that some people have, that they feel like they have a baby face or fullness in their cheeks experience. So maybe she doesn't have the same understanding as what people who are considering this procedure are going through. So if you guys haven't heard of it yet and you haven't seen all these articles and videos and Twitters and whatevers, what the heck is buccal fat removal and why is everyone suddenly getting it done? So buccal fat removal. I would state that at least in my practice, the buccal fat pad removal procedure is actually declining a little bit in terms of how many people are doing it. I would say around the COVID Zoom boom a year or two ago, we were peaking at about one to two cases per day. Uh, and now it's down to about one to two cases per week is essentially removing the fat from your cheeks, but more specifically, it is the surgical removal of the buccal fat pad that we naturally have between our cheekbones and our jaw lines. According to a plastic surgery clinic here in Australia, the buccal fat reduction surgery aims to correct prominent or chubby cheeks. That's pretty accurate. The uh, objective of this operation is truly to correct prominent or chubby cheeks or chipmunk cheeks. People usually call it that when they want it removed. It's not always designed to enhance or sculpt an already contoured face. Most of my patients really have a lot of fullness, loss of definition, and want to enhance their cheekbones and jawline by eliminating that interposing fat mass that is making it less noticeable and more obscured. Can I just ask what precisely is wrong with having prominent or chubby cheeks? Nothing is wrong at all with having prominent or chubby cheeks unless it's something that bothers you. If you don't feel comfortable with it and you want it corrected, I do think that the buccal or buccal fat pad removal procedure is very safe and effective in skilled hands. Why the heck does that need to be corrected exactly? Is it just- It does not need to be corrected. It is a purely elective procedure. Is it just me that is getting bloody sick of all these new flaws popping up? It's like as soon as you correct one flaw, suddenly society has decided that there is a new flaw that we as women need to correct. I'm pissed. Not at the women that have had this done, like it's your face, do whatever you want. If it makes you happy, go for it. I will support you. I'm just pissed that it's like one flaw after another. It's like, where does it end? Buccal fat removal surgery is usually completed within an hour so nice and quick and simple and only costs between two thousand and five thousand dollars depending on where you go money well spent now why the heck would anyone spend that kind of money to hollow out their face I genuinely don't know but my theory you can also say that this is the equivalent of um, three to four syringes of filler so in terms of non-invasive versus surgical procedures it's apples to apples and that's an important thing to consider is that the folks that have had this done, and this is nothing to like talk bad about them, this is just my theory, like the psychology behind why we have started doing this to our faces. I think it is to make you appear more like high fashion, more refined, more mature. The whole high fashioned and refined and mature look 
is something that I think that we are sort of thinking about what a supermodel face looks like in the low light of a runway, for example, with a lot of makeup and contour along these high cheekbones. I think that's where people get the idea that buckle fat pad removal conveys the sense of a high fashion look, which is a recurring theme in what people are going for. But usually patients who come to me for the procedure are simply looking to be more sculpted and have a little bit more character to an ill-defined face and to basically showcase and stop concealing their cheekbones and jawlines. And it works, like to be fair, it does look more high fashion, but that does not mean that it suits everyone. Some of us do happen to be born with rounder faces, fuller cheeks, and if you go so at this point, I think that Miss Lang will feature a simulated before and after of a model and uh, she simulates the effect of buccal fat pad removal surgery. Um, I don't know what Miss Lang's background is, but this is not a very accurate assessment. I have made videos before about how the buccal fat pad removal procedure is really not a two-dimensional procedure. It's something better seen in three dimensions and you are not expected to see major changes on a frontal view. In this simulation, you can see that she warps the jawline and there's a bone called the mandible that goes from here to your temple that is warped inward by definition. This will not occur with buckle fat pad removal and that this before and after simulation is not accurate. I want to remove the fat there. I mean, it just looks kind of weird. Now look, I am 34, okay? So I remember the good old days of when Mary-Kate and Ashley, for example, would... Mary-Kate and Ashley as featured here are two models um, and child actresses that had uh, very alarming changes to their face over a certain period of time from their child actor days to their teenage days and college days in New York City uh, They became quite gaunt in appearance And I think a lot of this had to do with body fat composition as you can see hollowness in their temples and sunken in eyes uh, They may or may not have had buckle fat pad removal surgery. They certainly haven't admitted to it um, But I think there's a lot more to their appearance than buckle fat pad removal apparently say prune prune when they were getting their photos taken to create that hollowed out high fashion cheekbone look because back in my day that's what we did for photos we were just like sucking our cheeks to look more model-esque but of course nowadays that's simply not good enough now we have to go the whole hog and literally pay a surgeon to surgically remove the fat underneath our cheekbones to give us that look but why <laughs> So I would say again, it's really important to understand as a viewer of this video that you don't have to go to a surgeon and pay money to have this removed. If it's something that bothers you, the buckle fat pad removal surgery, even though it's become very popular, is actually a time tested and very versatile operation that is effective in all age groups. Um, it does not promote early aging and it does not have any significant functional impact on speech or chewing as some might say. Why are we like this? And what the heck was wrong with our faces before this was a thing? Before having buccal fat in your cheeks, when was that deemed an issue that needed correcting? Now let's look at some famous examples of people that are alleged to have undergone this tweakment. I just find it really fa- I like the word tweakment. Fascinating and alarming. So Bella Hadid is of course- The, the first uh, celebrity that Miss Lang introduces is Bella Hadid. And I would invite you all to watch my video uh, that I've already created on this topic. The main offender, she is long rumored to have undergone buccal fat removal. And to be fair, I do believe it. Bella is definitely going for that high fashion look. Anyone can see that. And when you look at her older pictures, Bella, like her sister Gigi, naturally had a beautiful full face. What was wrong with her face before? Nothing. She was so beautiful. You're right, Stephanie. There's nothing objectively wrong with Bella Hadid's face. She wanted a certain change, and I think actually aging and post-pubertal changes have a lot to do with the way her face shape changed, as well as makeup and lighting. Um, but there may have been issues that bothered Bella that you don't understand. You have a very naturally sculpted, oval-shaped face, and when people have fuller or rounder faces, sometimes they wish to have faces more like yours. She still is, but she was already. Then there's Zoe Kravitz, or Zoe Kravitz, actress and model and daughter of my personal favorite, Lisa Bonet, born with naturally stunning bone structure. Absolute babe of this world. But where the heck have her cheeks gone? Then there's uh, Zoe Kravitz is also cited as being a quote unquote offender of this operation. Um, and I want to make it very clear that all these photographs have a very good potential to be either photoshopped or enhanced by certain makeup. 
it's very possible that Miss Kravitz had buckle fat pad removal surgery. I actually think she looks really good right now, but weight loss and other changes can also be Then there's uh, Sophie Turner. Yeah, what has happened here? Has she just aged? Has she lost weight? I mean, Here's one photograph that I think is uh, fairly compelling. Um, I think that the change in the before and after is pretty alarming, frankly. And her face goes from a beautiful heart-shaped face to more of a square-shaped face with very, very enhanced hollows in her cheeks. She's had these before uh, in the before photos, but we're comparing apples to oranges here as her makeup has changed. I would also um, make a, a pretty uh, important note that her hair is casting a shadow on her right mid face, which is certainly accentuating this look. I don't think so. She's only 26 and she's always been tall and slim. So where have her cheeks? If this is the after photo, I think she's very attractive here. And I don't think that buckle fat pad removal, if she had it, uh, had any negative impact on her appearance. It's disappeared too. Leah Michelle, once the proud owner of a face with buccal fat, now is no longer. <laughs> I don't know who Leah Michelle is, and I'm sorry for that, but this is a pretty alarming picture. I don't know if anybody's seen this before, um, but what I see here is an exaggerated, almost masculine, almost superhero masculine jawline uh, that looks like uh, it was imposed or superimposed on an otherwise unchanged face. Uh, this actress or celebrity has had contour in her mid face all along. It certainly appears to be accentuated by some sort of volumization of both the cheek and the jawline. And I'm not a betting man, but I'd be willing to bet that the patient's changes are attributable to lighting, makeup, and cheek and jawline augmentation as much or more than the potential for buckle fat pad removal. Incinerated in a cosmetic surgeon's dungeon. Tell me I'm not the only one that liked Leah Michelle's face with her buccal fat intact. Yes, she looks glamorous and high fashion now, but she was a natural stunner before too. Isa Gonzalez, where has your buccal fat? Am I the only one that thinks she actually looks a lot better in the after here? Very pretty dimples, very pretty contour in the mid face, very youthful full face. She's got nice overall skin tone. She's got a youthful appearance. I am not complaining about that. After. She actually already had naturally high prominent cheekbones and angular features. And to be fair, in my eyes, a little buccal fat was a lovely addition to her face. Chrissy Teigen, now she is one celebrity that has actually been honest and upfront and come out and said, yeah, I had my buccal fat removed. I think now is an opportune time to introduce or reintroduce a video that I made about a year ago about Chrissy Teigen and my thoughts about this procedure with her. She doesn't look like a candidate to begin with. Uh, however, she's very happy with the result that had a change on her face, but so did the filters she used in her post treatment video. Removed and what? I did that Dr. Diamond buccal fat removal thing and I like it. Good for her. If she likes it, that's the main thing. But why is it a thing in general? Why is it a thing to begin with? That's what I want to know. <laughs> Amelia Hamlin, I'm not gonna lie, this one shocked me. Have you ever seen a prettier face? Her brows, her bone structure, she's so beautiful. And now, who has stolen her? This is a pretty alarming post treatment photo as well. And I don't have a before and after of her in the same light with the same makeup. Um, but I will tell you that without a shadow of the doubt, uh, her jawline augmentation is causing a pretty alarming change, as well as her eyebrows that look almost, um, I don't want to use the word evil in appearance, but they're very slender and they come out and they're very sophisticated, um, but it accentuates the size of her eyes. Her cheek volume is accentuated here. And she has a very, very prominent jawline that uh, uh, is giving way to sort of a V-lined uh, chin shape. And maybe that's what she's going for. She may or may not have had buckle fat pad removal, but that's exactly the beauty of the procedure. It's subtle enough that you can't clearly tell if somebody's had it in most cases. Stolen her buccal fat. Give the girl her buccal fat back. Dove Cameron, her buccal fat is also... So... Dove Cameron is a celebrity that I've uh, discovered in my buckle fat pad research. And I do agree that she has some contour in the after photo here, but it looks very filtered. It looks very Photoshopped to me. Um, I don't know for sure if it is, but she is very attractive. She's got natural, we call it hypertellerism, which is when eyes are a little bit further apart. And she has a very, very beautiful facial shape, both before and after, regardless of filter. In action. Honestly, I am concerned for the buccal fat of this world. Please tell me that buccal fat removal is not the new BBL, the new nose job, the new lip filler. Can you imagine? I think at some point, and the reason I'm making this video is I just feel like at some point we need to step back and be like, enough is enough. What the fuck are we doing to our faces? And why? And for whom? I think it's a really good discussion point here. 
and uh, I may end on this note, that the buckle fat pad procedure is something that's very personal in most cases. Um, and I'm looking at an attractive woman who doesn't look like she's had much plastic surgery herself, maybe some lip fillers, um, but she has a very narrow face, a very sculpted face to begin with, a very architectural nose, a very delicate nose. And um, it's very easy to either cast blame on the surgeons or the patients themselves for wanting to undergo certain procedures when you can't really understand where they're coming from. And I would encourage all viewers to extend some degree of sympathy for those who are considering the procedure and to try and consider the reality that the grass is sometimes greener on the other side of the fence. It's funny that as plastic surgeons, we perform both breast augmentation and breast reduction surgery. In Asian patients, we build up a nose and a lot of Caucasian patients, for example, will reduce a nose. So it's human nature sometimes to want what you don't have. And if you have something, it's easier to point blame at those who are trying to achieve the same thing through surgery when you've gotten it naturally yourself. And what is going to be the next flaw that we need to pay a cosmetic surgeon to correct for us? Is it going to be like nose removal, eyelid removal, chin removal, ear augmentations? To reiterate my point that not all tweakments suit all people and that we don't and shouldn't mold our looks into trying to fit these ridiculous beauty standard molds set for us. Look at Demi Moore and Madonna. In my opinion. So this is a great opportunity again to reintroduce a video on Miss Demi Moore that I presented about a year or two ago as well and to offer my thoughts on why her change was so drastic. Um, I think she had buckle hollows and the changes that you're seeing have a lot more to do with volumization of the mid face in the malar region than buckle fat pad removal, which I don't think occurred in the before and after. Opinion, and I could be wrong here, but I mean, it certainly looks like it. They have both had, allegedly, buccal fat removal to make themselves look more youthful and more refined and more high fashion, perhaps. But in my eyes, it's kind of had the opposite effect. They don't look younger. They don't look older. They just look different. Like, they just don't look like themselves. They don't look bad but they don't look better. So it's like, what was the point? And another thing I think is really interesting is that back in the good old days, a fuller face was considered to be youthful and attractive and everything. It still is. And these are still the good old days. Um, I think a fuller face is more youthful. And I've made a video on this as well in terms of uh, youth and beauty. Uh, I do think that buckle fat pad removal is inherently not intended to reduce the facial fat volume. So when you talk about a gaunt face, we're talking about temporal hollows, sunken in eyes, and more skeletal features. The buccal fat pad is a very deep structure that imposes a certain mobility on the anterior lower third of the face. And when you have that, it moves when you speak and it honestly drives down jowls at a premature age. It's not something that should be linked to facial volume as a whole. You should think of the two as separate things. So that is one beauty standard that hasn't changed. Having a full voluminous face is something that carries on to this day. And in facelifts that I perform in all age groups, I'm gonna volumize the face with facial fat because I couldn't agree with you more, Stephanie. I do think that facial fat is beautiful overall. However, the buckle fat pad is a discrete mass that should not be considered part of the skin envelope and the subcutaneous fat volume. Everybody wanted it and nobody wanted to have that gaunt hollowed outlook. And now we're literally paying surgeons to create the gaunt hollowed outlook. I, again, I take issue with this because I've, uh, said time and time again that buckle fat pad removal is intended to give you more contour in your mid face, but it will not make you look gaunt. And I've also uh, produced a video on this very topic as well. It's like beauty trends are just so fickle. They are always changing. So it's like you might look at these celebrities and be like, wow, their cheekbones look amazing. I'm going to I'm going to end on this note. I think Miss Sang's energy is a little bit intense for me right now, but I will go on and tell you this. She is 100 percent correct in that Beauty trends are just that, they are trends. And surgery is very serious. It carries significant risks and expenses and should not ever be taken lightly. But if you have physical features that bother you and the forces are not external, do know that buckle fat pad removal is an operation that tends to be subtle in nature with subtle three-dimensional changes that you could review on your own time on my uh, webpage. We have a before and after photo gallery using consistent lighting. Uh, you're not gonna see incredible differences in the befores and afters, and that's why we have converted this into a three-dimensional study where you really can see 
better differences. And I've made a video on this topic as well. So if you or somebody you know was considering buccal fat pad removal surgery and you feel helpless now because it's become such a controversial topic, I want you to know that there are still proponents of this operation. And after doing about 300 cases, I feel very strongly that this is not one that confers a high level of regret. In fact, the satisfaction rate of this operation is as high as any of the procedures that I perform and I have never had to reverse any of these operations. So. Keep that in mind, I am biased in the sense that this is my profession and this is my craft, but I also take patient care very seriously and I'm very sympathetic to those who are seeking changes to their face. So if this is something that you're interested in, please don't hesitate to reach out and talk to me personally. Uh, at the very least, turn your notifications on, subscribe, and I will do my best to stay on top of this topic. Thank you so much.